the actual um, area we want to, we want to cut out from where the uh, reprojections of the stuff um, these guys will be showing later is going to be. That's rendered out, stenciled out from the, um, from the, from the original set. And then needless to say, there's always some kind of paint or rotor you have to do on, on the... Oh, there we went. There's always some kind of paint or rotor you have to do when you... Um, especially in this case where one of the actors has got his hand outside the green screen. So split and join and actually paint it in stereo. So that's basic, basically the key. It's not something super fancy. It's working. One of the things about keying in stereo is it's actually a lot more forgivable than keying for 2D because the stereo effects actually, I don't know what it does with the edges, but it just makes it work a lot better. <laughs> so that's good news for, for compers, but it's, it's, it's by no means, means an excuse for sloppy work anyway. So um, I'm piping some of the mats I've been used previously into, um, into the uh, despill. So I'm doing a selective despill on, on the background, on, on some certain areas, on, on the window here, on the back. And um, sometimes when, when you do a D spill, you lose a you lose a lot of light in the actual um, in the actual plate. So what I'm doing is also grabbing the difference between the original plate and the and the um, D spill plate, averaging the, the the channels down and just adding it back on top of it. So, so I'm keeping some of the same luminance that was supposed to be in, in the image in the first place. Um, I just want to quickly mention again, since since most of this stuff is actually video, and I think the the SI2K camera is, is really nice. Can produce some beautiful images, but you got to be careful when you when you're doing uh, visual effects with it. There's, you know, it's it's prone to errors everywhere. That's that's the nature of, of chip-based cameras, especially when you're dealing with CMOS stuff as well. So it's not, it's by no by no means perfect, but you can get something decent out of it. So after the despill is done, I got a little little dirty trick here where I basically because the um, I get some edge artifacts because the, the difference between the, the bright foreground objects and the bright and the dark background screen. I'm doing a little trick where I'm actually um, shrinking in the mat and sort of creating a um, extending the foreground pixels um, and copying the alpha back in and sort of pre-multiplying some sort of expanding the foreground pixels a little bit to keep it. Let me show you how, how it looks. It, it doesn't work on everything. It's, it's, it's quite a dirty trick, and it works quite well in this example if you use it subtly. But um, it's basically extending the foreground pixels of, 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 the, uh, of the key so you don't actually have anything of the background inside your foreground. So um, that's basically some of the things um, we try to do when we, when we fix this shot. It's just going through and minimizing the, the, the visual uh, discrepancies between the eyes. And uh, we, we checked it last night, and, and it seemed quite nice. And I'm looking forward to seeing it here um, up on the big screen. So to summarize, there's, there's, uh, even though you can shoot everything on set um, and it looks nice, there's, there's going to be a whole bunch of problems in post to fix. And these are just some of the methods that I've come across. I mean, I'm sure there's, we're still learning as we go, basically. And that's it. There's no written rule for some of this stuff. But uh, hopefully things like Ocula will help making these uh, things bit more easy to do. So that was a quick rundown of my stuff. <laughs> so um, thank you very much, Theo. If anyone's got questions for Theo, we'll ask him. Uh, before I switch back to my other screen, let's ask him in case he needs to show you anything. So I've got a hand up here. So, um, not, to, not to pull you up on something, but I didn't see many ST map nodes in that. What are you doing for lens distortion? These guys are going to cover that. Oh, okay. Cool. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm at, with the tracking side of things, we, we, did, we, wanted, we didn't know where to decide where we're actually going to take care of the lens distortions. But this, this does need lens distortion on it. It, it. There's some distortion on the actual image. So, this was all done with a D lens? Like you did yeah. the track, D lensed it, yeah. did it, and then. It, 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 it seemed to work. Any more questions? Oh, hi, I was just wondering if you had any experience working with water, like lakes or oceans or anything like that. I was thinking about other highlights. Um, highlights and specularities are something you generally want to try to avoid 
because especially if we do polarization, it's going to be massive differences in where the actually reflections are in each eye. So I, I don't have any experience with shooting with that stuff. But, um, but, but on Avatar, there was quite a lot of specular surfaces that needed treatment. OK. A uh, couple of questions here. You talked about having the hero eye. Where's the decision which eye is going to be the hero made? Is that something you decide, or is that an overall project thing? I think it's the one that's not shoot, shot directly through the polarized mirror. Well, both of them are shot through it, but I think it's the, the one. I think we chose this time, we chose the one that had the nicest kind of, we, we preferred the color look of that was more kind of consistent. And yeah. I think, and, and it's a bit sharper, but both are going through it. I think both are going through a mirror, right? Well, that's not fun. Yeah. The one going through the mirror is usually slightly sharper. Yeah. So I think we, we kind of made it based on color. Um, okay, we'll put my point. <laughs> um, the, the camera shining through the mirror is supposed to be reflecting off is generally the, the hero one to use because uh, the one reflecting off can have uh, more color aberrations and distortions due to, especially on long lenses. Thank you. That's a question here. Um, in this case, I think they do match, but I, th uh, I think you generally want to try to avoid grain in all. So basically, regenerate grains after removing or something? Sorry? Do you regenerate the grains? I mean, first you remove it and then put a um, same grain structure in both of these? What we've done previously is just get rid of all the grain, basically. <laughs> Dig degrain the entire plant and not put it back in. Thank you. Hi. Uh, you said that keen, um, edges can be quite forgiving in 3D. Uh, how bad is it with hair? It's not that bad as far as we've had problems with, but it d depends on the footage. I think shooting with this camera, hair might be a bit more tricky, just keying wise but I don't see a problem with it. Like rabbits, animals, they're not really a problem? I can't say I've actually really worked with that. Fairy so. animal, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Rabbits are okay, turbots are terrible. Yeah. If you shoot in a film with badgers. <laughs> uh, I will comment on uh, film grain. Uh, if you have to put the grain back in, it's just important that it's completely different in each eye. If you use the same grain on both eyes, it will be on the screenplay and it'll look different. If you make it completely different, uh, you can't spatialize it and it just looks like the thing blends into it. 